Hold on, Drake. Seems that at least Lords Apart, for much of this series, it was a case of so so near yet so far for you. Is that fair? Uh, yes, I do agree. Uh, after the first test, we had pretty much been that um, and took whatever we could have into the second test. Um, and then if you if you think back to the first test, that first inning score actually kept us in the game and uh, in similar fashion in this one, slightly under par, uh, potentially if we had gotten to 350, um, obviously we would have been uh, in a better position. But yeah, pretty much yes, spot on. Yeah, I mean, um, was it a case of you not taking your chances or did England do well to get themselves out of those tricky positions they found themselves in? Well, if, if you look at the run of play for, um, for this game um, and even in the, in the second test, both teams put down opportunities. Um, batters were given second and third opportunities. Um, for us, we had a significant number of our players getting to 50. If two or three of those would have been converted to 100, um, you know, we had 200 run partnerships. Potentially, you know, those would have been, if, 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 if taken deeper, um, scores, especially in the second innings, um, would have posed more of a challenge. And, and any other missed opportunities for you? I mean, were you pleased in, in general with the uh, with the bowling? Uh, well, obviously, you know, having taken three wickets, um, you know, on day one, after posting two eighty, I uh, would have thought that we were well in it, um, and and the, the plan was really to to get England out for less than three hundred. Uh, which would, would have given us some kind of lead. Um, so that was definitely a missed opportunity. Yeah. Um, in terms of positives, can you point out a couple of them? Uh, and also, like, overall, this 3 0 seems to feed to you, like, for some, it might have been, like, unpredictable lines. And what do you have to say about that? Um, I'll take your last question first, so I don't forget. Um, yes, there was obviously, there's history around the series, uh, the fact that we had the trophy um, and you now pretty much turned it over. With our young emerging side, there would have been a lot said about uh, this being a walkover. Um, obviously, we would have, we should have competed better, but we did show a lot of fight uh, during the series. Um, from a batting standpoint, I was very pleased with our, with our scoring rate, tempo, uh, especially in the second test match and, and to a lesser extent in this one. Um, the fact that uh, a young Hodge was able to score 100 following up what he did in Australia. Um, uh, Joshua De Silva appeared to have been coming to some kind of form and, and Jane was able to extend his, his run coming back from injury, having played some county cricket, showed really good form. Uh, Shamar Joseph, obviously a new kid on the block, uh, still learning, uh, so, it, so it was good to, to actually uh, watch him uh, almost take the learning from uh, the conditions here, um, adjusting his lengths and so on. Um, so, so those were significant positives um, that we can take from the series um, as we approach the South Africa series at home. It just seemed to be a theme about this young side and what, what certain players were able to do in Australia and here. Uh, how do you go about harnessing that and building on it though? Uh, results, results are important. Um, a lot of times we focus on the outcomes um, and obviously that's important. Uh, the focus for us going forward and always have been, has been on the process. Um, you don't, you're, you're not going to get performances every day. But one thing you can actually have some control over is, is going through your processes every single day and give yourself the best chance of performance. So, so that is really what we're going to be focusing on. Um, and then I'd mentioned a couple of positives that we could take away. We will actually do a bit of deep dive into that um, to see what processes and, and just confirm the processes that went into achieving those and, and looking to replicate that. And just following on from that, when you're talking about the processes and it's perhaps a little bit of commentary around looking a little bit undercooked going into this series. So how then are you going to approach that when you, when you do have South Africa? Well, um, we, we, play, we play South Africa with maybe this, uh, 10 under two weeks time. Um, when you think about preparation, this is good timing heading into that. Um, there are a few players who would obviously need some rest. 
Um, the bowling group, for instance, would have played all three test matches. So some consideration has to be given to them in terms of rest. Um, the batters would have a bit more time with them uh, to be able to go through some of their own individual routines, reinforce some of the good things that uh, they have done in the series, um, and then address some of the you know potential deficiencies that would have um, been made quite obvious. Um, so definitely um, there is a window for us in Trinidad, maybe the next, we'll, we will be off for sure, a couple of the guys will get a couple of days off um, <coughs> after the flight home, um, and then we will have maybe f about four days that we will just look to address that. One more for you, okay, and then we'll go to Zoom. Andre, your, your uh, young batting side has had quite a few tough pace assignments. You've had Cummins and uh, Stark in Australia, and now Mark Wood here. Is, is Mark Wood, the way he's bowled in this series, the quickest uh, pace challenge that you, your boys have had to face? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, you know, I can remember having a conversation with, uh, with Louis um, and, and just, uh, I think you can remember an over that Mark Wood bowled at him and um, every single ball, the, the speed was flashed on the, on the screen. Um, and then just having that conversation about playing back home, first class cricket, where potentially maybe 10, 20 people in the stands versus 20,000 people in the stands and, and then the uproar when the bowler comes in. So definitely it was a learning, steep learning curve um, for him and, and, and the other batters. Um, but that's, that's the game. You, you keep learning. Um, there were instances, as you would have seen or able to recall in the second test or even here, uh, where we really stood up to that. Uh, and play pretty well. Um, so it's really about replicating that and having, for me, with this, within the squad, uh, a certain level of bravery um, to be able to, to stand up to that and expect that this is, this is the level of cricket that you're at. But at the same time, it's not beyond you. Um, you know, it's just being as positive and, 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 you know, as much common sense as possible. Okay, we'll just see if there's any questions on Zoom. You've got a hand up. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, hi, it's okay. I just to interact with the coach. Um, one regards to the instructions. Yeah, my name is Dave. Uh, I am the editor of College Point and Online Cricket Publication. I want to ask you a question about uh, our uh, new Wednesday's test opener, Mikhail Louis. A very vital defeat and uh, some twin starts earlier on in the test series that we saw. Uh, there's been a bit of a criticism that uh, the right hander um, does not really have uh, a back foot game. So, how would you assess his current uh, backsmanship and what do you think would be the work in progress in the discussions post the series? I'm, I'm sure if you were to go through history or even um, identify a player that is a current player at the moment, you'll be able to, to identify some kind of deficiency. No player um, is really the full or finished article straight away. And, and you have alluded to the point that uh, Mikel, this is pretty much his first series. Um, I've, what has been good about him is that um, he showed very good intent on the front foot, um, especially straight. There were instances where he, we did play off the back foot, more of a punching, um, drive off the back foot. Um, he, occasionally he would cut, um, but by his own admission, um, it is more an appreciation of the an importance to expand this game as opposed to a deficiency. Um, if you come up in a you know if you come up in an environment where the pitches are low and slow, it's unlikely you're gonna experience or be asked consistently to, to play in a particular way. And and this experience here in in England is actually open up the eyes not only his but of other players. Um, you, can, you can say what you want to them but until they actually experience it in, in, in some instances that is when um, the light bulb, light bulb moment happens. Um, so yes for sure um, he has an appreciation just like the other players that um, the, the need to expand the game in different ways is, 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 is important for, 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 for us to remain relevant. Okay. I think that's all we have. Thank you very much. I have a oh, I'm sorry, I yeah. didn't know how to raise my hand. You didn't know, okay. Um, Cricketinterviews.com. Um, Andre, good afternoon, top class. Um, focusing on the batsmen, 
apart from bravery, what else are you looking for? Obviously skill as well. But what else are you looking for in the batsmen so that they can perform better? There's a, there's a general length that uh, most um, fast bowlers will look to bowl, uh, especially when they're, they're bowling on it on the first time. Um, and then obviously having an, had an opportunity to bowl maybe a few balls or a couple of overs, then they'll make the necessary adjustment. So um, our ability to get into the ball around that good length area and be comfortable with that um, is definitely something that um, we need to be better at. Um, there were instances where we, we drove the ball um, through the offside um, and, and down the ground, um, but the greater consistency in executing um, those. But as I said before, um, I was very happy with our intent um, in how we look to score as opposed to just occupying the crease. Obviously, a balance needs to be struck, um, but yeah, just, just that, that ability to negotiate the ball around a good length um, and having that um, ability to get into it. Right, so skill and a bit of decision making. Last question, you spoke about intent, but that does not win matches. Do um, we need to be playing more test cricket? Sorry, uh, was that a question I missed? Yes, so I was saying intent doesn't win matches, and you said earlier that until they get into the situation at this higher level, then they will, not, they will not experience certain things. So is it that you want more chess cricket played? Well, intent shown um, with execution over time does actually get yourself in a position um, to win matches, whether you bat or you bowl or you field. Um, the catch-22 is to get more matches than you need to be performing um, in the matches that you, you do get um, for, for, for some kind of... Um, case to be made about um, you know increasing the number of matches um, so for the in, for the matches that we do have it's really an, an, an opportunity for us to be the best that we can and then potentially look at uh, how we lead into test matches if there's an opportunity for us to um, maybe have more matches in that particular uh, environment if it's foreign to us um, or engage in more bilateral discussions where um, you know these things can be facilitated. All right, thank you. Best wishes in the next series. Thank you, Michelle.